Working during the global pandemic has been very different from, from what we've normally been doing. So it's been really nice to see science researchers coming together to tackle new problems, to bring all their different expertise and work together as a team. So here at King's, lots of research was stopped and many of the students and postdocs um, not in my lab were keen to be involved in this type of research. So actually we were able to bring together a bigger team of people to work on questions that were, were very important. Before the pandemic, my lab was interested in studying antibody responses to viruses. So we were interested in studying these to inform vaccine development. And the majority of the research that we did was on uh, antibodies in HIV infection. And we were studying these antibody responses over time to try and understand how we could develop vaccines better. But we were also looking at antibody responses to emerging zoonotic viruses. So these are viruses that pass from animals to humans and can cause disease. And I think the re recent global pandemic has highlighted how important this type of research is in being ready to fight um, viruses as and if they pass into the human population. Before the pandemic, I was mainly focusing on antimicrobial resistance. The government uh, asked uh, someone I worked a lot with uh, during the pandemic, so Professor Sarah Walker, and she was asked to set up uh, a very large survey trying to estimate how many people are currently infected and how uh, antibody levels might um, uh, change over time. So we have an idea, okay, how many people have immunity and how many people are currently infected. So before the pandemic, I worked uh, mostly on common respiratory infections and how those um, spread through populations and affected people with chronic diseases like asthma that put them at risk of severe outcomes. I also did quite a bit of response focused work, mostly looking at the transmission dynamics of Ebola virus and how we can design vaccination strategies to prevent um, to prevent epidemics. For, from my point of view, um, in mathematical modelling, we started working absolutely flat out as soon as we heard about this virus early in January 2020. And so it was non-stop um, trying to understand key questions about the transmission dynamics, about who was being most affected and how severe the pandemic was, so that we could make predictions, projections and understand what the future might hold. So before the pandemic, my research was mostly focused on influenza. It switched very quickly from flu to COVID-19 and haven't really thought about flu since um, until very recently. We, uh, the CVR, became a member of the Coronavirus Clinical Characterization Consortium that recruited a prospective cohort of hospitalised COVID-19 patients. Um, secondly, um, as I had been working with the Malawi Ministry of Health and the University of Malawi College of Medicine, I worked with Malawi and Glasgow investigators to develop a cohort study looking at SARS-CoV-2 infection and antibody um, exposure in, in healthcare workers and community members in Malawi. So our COVID-19 research has had several different impacts in different areas. So we've worked with clinical colleagues at St. Thomas's Hospital. So for example, early in the pandemic, there wasn't much uh, testing being done. So there were patients coming in and they weren't sure whether the, some of the syndromes they were seeing were related to having had a COVID infection or something else. So we were able to help them um, test uh, point of care lateral flow antibody tests to see whether they could use these to diagnose there and then to having had COVID previously or not in relation to their disease. Um, we've also looked at the longitudinal antibody responses in SARS-CoV-2 infection and we were able to show that this was a typical antibody response to a, a viral infection and that the antibody response waned quite quickly within the first three months of infection and this gave some insights into the requirement for vaccine boosting um, going forward, which has been important. One of the things that were particularly challenging at the beginning was uh, that we had to, to set up a survey in such a short time. Nor normally for something so big, you take probably, I don't know, half a year. Uh, and as essentially we had to set up, up in roughly 16 days. It gives a lot of information and it has informed uh, several policies such as uh, second national lockdown and the rule of six and, and many other policy decisions related to the pandemic. Since vaccines were introduced, a lot of focus is on, okay, how effective are the vaccines? Does the effectiveness uh, reduce over time? And, to, and if so, to what extent? And is that uh, our particular groups 
less protected against infection than others. Some of our early work right at the beginning of the pandemic in the UK, before the lockdown happened, was to try and understand um, what interventions might work and how stringent and how long those interventions would have to be in place. And so you can use mathematical models to, to analyze a range of what we call counterfactual, so different scenarios where you do different interventions and then you can compare them. And so we use that to compare things like um, lockdowns, school closures, um, social distancing, and to see what impact each of those might have had so that the policymakers could weigh up as much evidence as possible when they were making decisions. The ISARIC um, clinical characterization protocol study is now one of the world's largest prospective cohort um, of hospitalised COVID-19 patients. We've recruited in excess of 240,000 patients to date. So that's allowed us to really generate some of the first detailed description of clinical characteristics of patients who have severe COVID-19, both in adults and in children. Um, in particular, two pieces of work I've led have included um, development and validation of the 4C mortality score. So I pivoted the work that I've done on influenza to this score, which is an easy to use score for clinicians to um, basically categorize patients coming in to hospital with COVID-19 into low, medium, high and very high risk of inpatient death to help them direct them to more intensive treatment and also in more intensive monitoring. Working on a pandemic is what my job is about, it's what I've trained for. And so from that point of view, it's quite important to do a good job, it's quite high, uh, high pressure, fast paced, and it's quite, that makes it quite exciting. But at the same time, you can't lose sight of the devastation that this pandemic has, has caused. And so even, even though there's been a lot of scientific opportunity, would I trade it? Yes, obviously we would trade it back. So. Getting rid of the worries of, of uh... You know, little niggles and experiments that you can't get to work in other things to just sort of put that all aside and focus on one common research uh, goal that actually has an impact on people's lives has been really um, quite was quite exciting with the prize money i'm going to use this to set up two new research techniques in the lab to try to identify antibodies and vaccines that could give broad protection against multiple viruses. So I would like to thank the supporters of the Medical Research Foundation for continuing to support science during the pandemic. This um, money is going to be really important in, our, in helping our research on emerging viruses and helping us be prepared for the next um, pandemic if and when it arises. I'm really thrilled to receive this funding. I'm really excited for the opportunity it's going to provide. And the main thing that I'm going to do is conduct a research project looking at the impact of the pandemic on the health of people with severe comorbidities, such as people subject to the shielding policy, and use electronic health records to better understand the impact that, um, that the COVID pandemic has had and the interventions that were used to protect those people. To those supporters, I'd say thanks very much. This is a really exciting opportunity to do great science and to really support people at a key stage in their career when they're trying to become independent and so thank you very much. I just want to say a massive thank you to all those who have donated to the Medical Research Foundation. I feel extremely honoured to be awarded this prize um, and I hope I put the prize funds to good use to address key unanswered questions about COVID-19 in Malawi and also that would be applicable to other sub-Saharan African countries. So thank you. Of course, the, the research that I'm planning to do, uh, which I think is really important and can really make a difference in how we do not only surveillance for the current pandemic, but also thinking further into the future for uh, future pandemics. Um, and I think basically working out how to do, do surveillance in the most cost effective and way is something that will be really useful for countries around the globe and this would be really not possible without the support of uh, the Medical Research Foundation and hence also the supporters and donors uh, that support the foundation and I'm absolutely thrilled uh, with being given the possibility to actually uh, do this work and I'm very much looking forward to starting with this project uh, yeah and I can't thank you enough.